Okay, I've been working on the uh, software here, and you can see if you turn the knob, the uh, frequency goes up and it goes down. And uh, the the display. So I have a splash that first when you first turn on, it says four, five, six, seven, and you can see that digit isn't going. But let me flex this. PC board right here. I'm going to do it again. Four, five, six, seven. So flexing the PC board fixes the problem. And now I started at 145 and I can go up. And when I go down, it wraps around to the four. And so everything's fine as long as I put pressure on the PC board. So there must be a cold solder joint somewhere. So I need to sort that out sometime. But anyway, the software is working and um, uh, I did have to make some changes. So there's two pins coming off the encoder wheel here. One tells you if you're going left or right, or, or counterclockwise and clockwise, and that's just a steady state. It, it toggles back and forth. When you start going one direction, it'll toggle counterclockwise, and when you go the other way, it'll toggle clockwise. And then every time you hit a little detent, uh, it sends a pulse, a, a rising pulse. So I can't do polling, I have to do interrupts. And so I needed an interrupt pin on my uh, on my Nano, and unfortunately I'd used it, the Nano only has two interrupt pins. It has uh, uses pins two and three uh, for interrupts, and I'd already used pin two, so I had to cut and jump, and I, I cut pin two and, and, and moved it over, and then I ran pin two to the, uh, to the pulse, pulse for, the, uh, for the wheel. So anyway, it's up and running now. Um, and then I've got some calibrated software in there to have a gain and an, off, gain and an offset so it sets the DAC value, um, and it's going to get it close. And then um, I think that um, once I have the feedback loop, I'll read the frequency. So you'll set the frequency here, but it'll read the frequency, and then it'll set the DAC to the frequency that it, that it measures and stuff. So anyway, um, I've got some ideas about the uh, frequency counting, so uh, stay tuned for that. All right, while working on this radio, I found myself wanting a tool that I haven't used for a long, long time. And that is a logic probe. I really needed a logic probe. I was, I was kind of shocked. Um, so let me, let me hook it up to five volts here and ground. And there we go, we have, we have a logic probe. And the reason I needed it was to, for this uh, wheel here. So I put it on one pin and you can see that we're low. And as I turn it to the right, it goes high. And then I turn it to the left, it goes low. So that's my clockwise, counterclockwise. So that signal is solid, but whichever way you're going. Now the next one is low. Oops, low. And as I rotate it, I get blips. So I get positive going edges. And that was very valuable for me to know that what I first did was um, my main software routine is a polling routine, and it looks at all of the inputs. It looks at the looks at the counterclockwise, you know, it look, looks at all kinds of things. It looks at the switches, states, and stuff like that, and it looks at that um, a rotating uh, clock. And it's, that pulse is too fast, and my software wasn't seeing it. So even though I was turning the wheel, uh, it was not working. And I said, well, I wonder, if it, I wonder if there's a signal there or not. And I, and I needed the logic probe to tell me there was a signal. Uh, and uh, it, it, I mean, it's a very, very old instrument, but it does come in handy every once in a while. So I thought that was interesting. Um, now, obviously, we can hook up a, a modern digital oscilloscope and try to look for those edges and stuff. But this is so handy and so much more uh, user-friendly than, than using the scope. But um, uh, those pulses do happen very, very fast. And so what I said before was I couldn't use them in a polling routine. Um, I had to use the interrupts. And so that um, every time you rotate it and you get one of those pulses, it interrupts the microprocessor, sets a flag, and then that flag is, is interrogated as part of the polling sequence. So that flag will go, my polling sequence will see the flag, will do the, the increment or decrement, and then after I get done doing what I'm doing, I clear that flag and I'm ready for another pulse. So uh, using the interrupts that way. If, you, if you've never used interrupts before, um, yeah, this is a great, great example of why, why you want to do that. 
All right, so uh, I think the next thing to do is maybe uh, show you a little bit of the software, um, kind of get a general idea of what the software looks like right now in this thing. Okay, let's take a, a quick look here at the software. Um, I'm using a couple libraries. Uh, the first two libraries are for the uh, OLED display. And then the third library here is for the uh, D to A converter, the DAC. Um, one of the uh, devices, I squared C address and second one, um, let's see here. We need to initialize those things. And then we need to uh, tell how things are wired up. So uh, on the uh, latches, I have a, a clock of data and a, a latch. Um, so uh, those are here. Now I used to have uh, the data pin on pin two and I had to move that to use it someplace else. So it's now wired up to A3. Um, and then I'm gonna define the buttons, the two buttons next to the OLED display. And then the wheel has has two two signals, the clockwise counterclockwise signal, and then the uh, pulses when you turn the knob. And I also wired up, uh, one of the switches is the duplex switch, whether you're on simplex or duplex, I've wired that in. There's another switch, but it's not five volt logic, so I haven't wired that in yet. And then we need to initialize some variables. Uh, the DAC value is the number of is the actual bit pattern that's being written to the to the DAC. Um, and then there's some calibration data to convert uh, the DAC values with actual frequency values and stuff. So the variable frequency is the one that we set from the front panel and it's displayed on the LEDs. And then there's a there's a, a gain, there's basically an offset in gain to, to to figure out how many bits that you really need on the DAC. All right. Now this is an important statement here if you've never done interrupts before. So the interrupt can happen regardless of what's going on in the software. It can happen at any time. And I'm going to use a flag. I'm going to say that yes, yes, the interrupt happened. I'm going to say that turned. I'll set that to one. And uh, the trick here is that you you call, you create a volatile uh, integer of uh, uh, some type of volatile um, variable. Doesn't matter what kind of variable it is, but it, it's volatile. That means that it just can be set at any any time. So you need to be able to do, you need to define it this way if you're going to use it in the interrupt. All right. So then we're going to get ready here. This is our setup routines. Uh, say that these these pins are these outputs and set them in their initial state. Here's some input pins. Um, and then there's one particular uh, pin that's very special, which is uh, pin two, which I'm using as the interrupt. And then you need to do this fancy statement, attach, interrupt, digital, pin to interrupt, turn. It, it, if you turn the knob, it's going to go to a routine called it turned. Um, and it's going to happen if there's a rising edge on that pin. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at it. It turned. Uh, here is it. It's turned. And all it does is it sets the variable turn to one. Otherwise, it's going to be zero. So that's that's all that the it turned very uh, subroutine does. Okay, you want to keep your interrupt routines as short as you can. Um, and then I'm going to initialize the display. Let's see here. Uh, where are we? Uh, let's see. Actually, I initialized the DAC, and then I initialized the display, and then I do the first. Uh, flash of the LEDs on the front panel. I count from four, five, six, seven. That's routine, a routine, routine called uh, LED flash three. We can go take a look at that. LED flash three. Um, it's going to count from four to seven. And then it's going to um, uh, basically every single digit is going to be the same. So we're just sort of going to have one digit. And then it's eight, so this is a four bit value and we're gonna have to copy that in into eight bits. And so we do that with this right here. Um, we're going to take the original one and keep it. And then we're gonna or it with uh, the same value but shifted left four places. So it's basically like multiplying it by 16. And now we have basically digit one and digit two all in eight bits. It's the same value, digit one, digit one, but it's four bits, four bits. And then we're going to shift that out, shift it out, and shift it out twice because there's uh, two shift registers. So you shift out 16 bits. And so all four characters 
all four digits will have the same value. And that's just the little, the little flash thing that I have here. And then we'll go back up. And then here's the main loop. So the main loop is a polling loop. It's going to be looking for switches. So if button one, we're going to do something. If button two, we're going to do something. So if button one um, and button two are both pressed at the exact same time, we're going to do a ramp. And I showed that on the uh, spectrum analyzer that you can do a frequency ramp. And that is the, the DAC ramp routine. So if you push both buttons, you do DAC ramp. If you push one button, you do increment, and you push the other button, you do decrement. So just frequency plus 100, frequency minus 100. Um, so there's kind of core, core settings. And then you also are looking for that interrupt flag. So if turned is one, then you're gonna do some other things. Uh, if you're going uh, clockwise, then you're going to increment. And if you're going counterclockwise, you're gonna decrement. So if it's equal to zero, um, then you're going to uh, decrement. I also have it set up so it only counts by one. And so that's going to take a really, really long time to set frequencies. So I have it such that if you flip the dupe switch up, the duplex switch up, you're going to be counting by 50s instead of by ones. And so that's just to speed speed things up to set, set things, okay? And then uh, if you're going uh, clockwise, then you increment, all right? And then after you do those things, you, you set the turned flag back to zero so you're ready for the next interrupt. All right, now you've you've incremented or decremented, but you may have gone too far. So if you go above 148 megahertz, clamp it at 148. If you go below 144, clamp it at 144. And then we're gonna calculate what DAC value do we need? And that's that gain and offset. So this this right right here sets the gain and the offset. So you're using the frequency offset and the frequency gain. Um, to figure out what the DAC value should be between zero and 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 uh, 40, 4095. Now that one may be too large or too small. So again, if it's bigger than four ninety five, clamp it there. If it's less than zero, clamp it there, and then update the DAC. So this is where you actually set the DAC with this command called DAC set voltage. That's a a a, um, a library that you have to load. That DAC library is something that you actually have to load. So when you're, if you want to compile this, make sure that you include the library Adafruit MPC 4725. All right, so we get all done with that. Then we're going to update the little OLED display. We're going to display the DAC value, the uh, uh, frequency of the VCO, and then the main frequency, which is uh, 10.7 uh, megahertz above that and then display those. Then you're going to display this all on the front panel, which is the LEDs. Now you need to do that digit by digit by digit. And uh, this is a clever way to extract those digits. Uh, you do modulo 10s on it. So if you do a modulo 10, it is basically, it's going to divide everything by 10 and then have a remainder. And the remainder will be the single digit. And then if you take the frequency and divide it by 10 and do the same thing, it will be the lowest number. Anyway, you, this is the way that you get all the four digits. And then we're going to shift those things out. We're going to shift them out. Um, digit three, digit four, digit one, digit two. Okay. And uh, and that's basically it. That's the that's the whole thing. There's a couple other LED flashes that you saw before, counting from zero to zero to nine and things like that. But um, the main the main uh, subroutine here is 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 this polling routine, uh, and it either either acts on switches or it acts on interrupts. And uh, yeah, there you go.